Amen. Yeah. In the book of Ephesians, there's a familiar doxology, there's a familiar praise recited by many believers and unbelievers alike. We've all heard it. To God be the glory. Yeah. It's on bumper stickers, it's in memes, and I pray that it's also in your heart. See, many associate this praise with the verses in chapter 3 of Ephesians. But actually, the praise in verses 20 and 21 is what God said in chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. Amen. Amen. Like the Ephesians, we've all faced trials. Yeah. We've all faced uncertainties. We've all face what seems like the impossibilities of life. Yeah. Paul is saying that God has done things for us that defy logic. God has done things for us or in us that defy expectation. Things that ain't supposed to happen, but God did. Yeah. So why is Paul giving God the glory? Because of Jesus' sacrifice. He was able to tear down the wall between us that both Jew and Gentile share the same spirit. Paul has given God glory for all that he did in chapter 1. Paul told us in chapter 1, we are chosen by God. He chose us, we didn't choose him. That we are predestined by God. That only he knows our future. That we are adopted by God. Amen. That we are the sons of God. Yeah. That we are sealed by God. Yeah. That we receive his spirit and sealed by his power. That's why Paul was giving God such a praise. That's why we give God all the glory. In chapter 2, yeah. Paul is giving God the glory for all that he did. In chapter 2, we were dead. But Christ made us alive. Come on, somebody. We are reconciled to Christ and brought nearer by his blood. We are all joined together as a holy temple in the Lord. In chapter 3, Paul has given God the glory for all that he had done. In chapter 3, God gave us insight into the mysteries of Christ. That in him and in faith, we can go to God with freedom and confidence. In chapter 3, we're given the dimensions of God's love. The height, the depth, the length, and the width of God's love. See what God has said and done in chapters 1, 2, and 3. It's so marvelous that Paul told him, he told the Ephesians, now to him who is able. Yeah, yeah. See, that's where we sit right now. Mm -hmm. We hear all these things that are lofty and they sound real good. Right. But back in the back of our mind, we got some disqualifiers uh -huh. trying to tell us the exact opposite of what God's word is saying to us today. So Paul had to say, God is able. Hallelujah. Yeah, because no matter how marvelous, God is able. Mm -hmm. Paul has given God the glory and the praise for all that he has done. See, we have the receipts. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Young people are all right. <laughs> I'm all right with the receipts. All right. Okay, but well, we'll, we'll whisper over to the older folk and let them know what the receipts mean. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We ain't talking about no receipts from Walmart. We ain't talking about no receipts from Dollar Tree. Y'all know y'all got them called up in the drawer in a basket. I'm going to get to those later on. I'm talking about them other receipts. We have the testimony that not only God is able to do, but God did. God did it before we even had life. God did it before we were even born. God did it from the foundations of the earth. We have a reason to praise Him. We have a reason to give God glory. See, in the text today, in the Amplified Version, it begins with the word, now. now. Oh, 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 oh. See, now is used 1,355 times in the King James 
version of the Bible. God is trying to say, don't look at the past. Understand I'm doing it now. Right. Right. Anybody need God to do anything now? Does anybody need God to do something now? It means at this present time and without further delay. Now to him who is able. Do we know God is able in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? Amen. Do we realize God is able when you were a baby and now that you're an adult? Yeah. What happens is that sometimes we don't consider our experiences are under the providence of God. Amen. It just feels like stuff just happening. Yeah. It feels like life is a, a runaway train. The world even calls it life. Yeah. But God is in control. God already knows our story. God already knows our story. We give him what? Glory. God is not waiting to see. He has already seen. He already knows that through it all, God shows us that he is what? Able. Yes, he's able. I know he's able. Just recently, you probably heard or seen on the news that I ran launched 200 of the most powerful ballistic missiles at targets inside Israel. Last report I saw, with all the potential for disaster, not one person was killed. Huh? Oh, you got to know when to give God over. Amen. See, what they spent time doing was trying to figure out how to retaliate. But every one of those cities that could have been here, they should have been out in the street. Amen. Giving God some glory. Amen. See, that's what happens sometimes when the enemy launches an attack against us. We look for the attacker. I just can't wait to see them. Wait until I see them. <laughs> Rather than giving God glory because the attack didn't work. Right, yeah. help somebody with that. You look to retaliate. Uh -huh. Give him a piece of your mind. Right. And you better got enough mind for your own self. Oh, How you gonna give somebody else some of it? I'm gonna help you in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Close to hundred percent of them were shot down by their weapon system called the Iron Dome. Yeah. And some assistance from our Navy. It shows God is able. He's able to give us the technology. He's able to give us the abilities. He's able to give us the protection. This manifestation in Israel, but it was a demonstration for us. This is for the crowd. For all that are watching. You know, the spectators, they just watch. Trying to see. Trying to figure out. That God is able. And they sat on the fact when well, they had the weapon system. They sat on the fact the Navy helped them. But you have to understand that it had to be the hand of God. Because all of those, those weapon systems could have missed. And thousands of people could have died. Amen. See, what God has done in your life it shows his providence in your life. But we got all kinds of reasons why we didn't get destroyed. And we tell people, I'm so glad I did this. I'm so glad I did that. You want to participate in a miracle when it was all God in his glory. See, we don't, we don't know how many attacks. We don't know how many diseases. We don't know how much calamity God has shielded us from. Most of us have done things that should have, would have, could have yeah. taken us out. Yeah. Amen. 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 Or ruled us out. Uh -huh. But it did because God set a hedge of protection yeah. around us. Yeah. That's your iron dome. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because we are chosen. Why? Because we are predestined. Why? Because we were adopted. Why? Because we were sealed with a seal. In Ephesians 6, God declares we can put on the whole on of God. Huh? So we are able to stand. Hallelujah. 
Stand with our lines, our loins girt with truth. Stand with the breastplate of righteousness. Stand with our feet shod with the gospel. Stand with the helmet of salvation. Stand with the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Stand praying always in the spirit. Because God is able to do, he enables us to do. He empowers us to do according to his will. See, the message Bible says God can do anything. Far more than you could ever imagine. Far more than you could ever guess. Or you could ever what? Request. See, the Bible repeatedly says God is able. But when we're under attack, we spend time with one Bible in our hand, tissue in the other hand. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, please, please, Lord, don't you. Do you know that God is able? He's able to do it. He's able to take our human frailties to make us whimper and cry because we're human. Amen. And he stands there and waits for us to realize that he is able. Let me say that again. He knows we're sitting up being what? Human. But he's waiting for us to realize that he is what? Able. Let me tell you what the Bible says. In Hebrews 7, 25, God is able to save to the utmost. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, God is able to make all grace abound to you. In Jude 24, God is able to keep you from falling. God is able to present you faultless. In Romans 16, 25, God is able, he's able to establish you. In Romans 14, 4, God is able, he's able to make you stand even when you don't think you can stand. In Acts 20 and 32, the Bible says God is able to build you up even when others try to knock you down. In Philippians 3 and 21, the Bible said God is able to subdue all things. He didn't leave nothing out. He said to do all things. Missiles coming through the air. Now stab you in the back. People talk about you on the side. People digging ditches so you'll fall in. God is able to subdue all things. Did I say all things? I said all things. All things, all people. Every attack, all things. We got a reason to praise Him. We got a reason to give God glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God. See, when we look back over the chapters of our lives, do we realize because God is able to do, we're able to walk in His blessings. To God be the glory. Because God is able to do, we are able to walk in his grace. To God be the glory. Because God is able to do, we are able to make heaven our home. To God be the glory. What's your story? I know mine. What's your story? Because God is able to do. God turned my pipe into a mind. Or oh, I'm talking to somebody. I ain't talking to everybody. But I'm talking to somebody. And he had to turn your morning into dancing. He had to turn your midnight into early morning. He had to turn your darkness into light. Am I talking to somebody? To God be the Lord. Because God is able to do. God changed my walk and my talk. To God be the Lord. There are some things and some people I would have walked up to you and got real close and I would have spoken some unknown tongues in your ear and dared you to say a moment word. But to God be the glory. Because God is able to do. God changed me. And it saved my marriage. 
but after 34 years, I'm still called. Come on, give God glory. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Because God, when I was headed for self destruction, he picked me up, he turned me around, he set my feet on solid ground. Not just me, you, not just me. Yes. He gives us his spirit. Yes. God loves us. Yes. 
us. He gives us his power. God loves us. He gives us his joy. To God be the glory. Glory in the church. To God be the glory. Glory in Christ Jesus. To God be the glory. For all that he has done. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But God. But God. But God. Decided to do. Exceedingly abundantly. Above all we can have. Hey! 
discipleship. Discipleship. In Jesus' name, there'll be someone here today that say, I want to associate with this ministry. I want to link up with the power and the praise and work in the vineyard with this ministry. You can come right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the door is open. If there be anyone today that you need the prayer of salvation, hallelujah. Because the most important thing is not for us to come to get Christ, but to get Christ and come. You can repeat after me, sitting right in your seat. You can come to the altar to give your life to Christ. But the object is that we leave here with, with the opportunity to give ourselves to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Too many times we as churches we make it too complicated. To join Jesus, you got to join the church. But that's not what Jesus said, because he said, we are what? The church. So I offer to you the prayer of salvation to all that would pray with me. That Jesus, by way of his mighty power, will work a work in you. And it reads, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now, help me to live for you the rest of this life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap in your life. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God the honor. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. For all that he has done. And we're going to complete our service today. Amen. By giving back to God. What he has already given us. He said he wants a tithe. Amen. He wants an offering. He wants you to give according to what's in your heart. According to what he has laid on your heart. In tithe and offering. He said that there will be meat in what? My house. That we can do all the things for the community, for the elderly, for the homeless, for the hungry, that he would have us to do. We ask right now that you give. As the ushers come by, give him the offering today. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. You can give also on cash out at BBWC 735. BBWC 735. Amen. Bless God in your giving today. We said he's able. We said he's great. Don't you want to bless a God like that? Amen. Amen. Let's bless him in our giving. Hallelujah. Everything we see and hear, God had to bless. Amen. 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 This is your opportunity Amen. to bless his house. Amen. Amen. This is your opportunity to give God a tangible blessing. Because he's what? Already blessed us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone right behind you. God a hand clap for this ensemble.
Amen. 